exercise which does not work in bed on a soft mattress. You need to be on a hard surface or a floor or have a board on the bed. Knee hugs, as its name implies, for the lower back. You can do a single knee hug, keeping your head and neck relaxed, which is why I have a large pillow. Not everyone will need a pillow. You can do single knee hugs, one leg, then the other leg. And you may notice one hip is tighter than the other hip. Pay attention to the difference between the two sides. Notice how you're breathing. Especially notice any tension in the head and neck, lifting the head up. And again, I could do a nut double knee hug. Now some types of back injury, the problem will be lifting the feet up. You have to use stomach muscles and hip flexor and you'll put a lot of pressure on your discs that way. So the single one is safer, but for some people the double one is better because it's symmetrical. There's no torsion going through the pelvis. So this is the double knee hug. Once you're here, it's lengthening the lower back, opening the joint spaces, lengthening the paraspinal muscle. Again, keep your head and neck relaxed. Possibly using the breath on the out breath, you might find you get your knees a fraction closer to your chest. But again, it's very subtle. Don't be aggressive or gung ho or try too hard. Just wait, be patient. It's a back stretch. Now, the problem we're here is getting out of it. You might try one leg at a time or both legs. Okay. Single and double. There's also uh, an advanced version of a single knee hug which is with one straight leg. That was my sacred left joint releasing from the left. This is a hip flexor stretch, but again that puts quite a torsion through the pelvis and the lower back, so be very mindful of how your back feels. Again, you may find one side is tighter. Good idea to all, always work the tight side, at least as much as the easy side. We tend to do the easy side more. That will tend to maintain any muscle imbalance. 